And Rod Stewart, live, 1988, Philadelphia, Every Picture Tells a Story. And uh, that was the request for uh, my guest today, Nancy Santangelo, who is retiring after 44 years here at LaGuardia Community College. And I'm, I'm pulling up, I'm trying to, I'm pulling up, uh, trying to pull up our, the, the, the announcement for today, because I had all your information there. Uh, but Nancy, you're, you're with the, uh, the Office of Student Information and the Welcome Center. Is that, that correct? Yes, the Student Information Center, the Welcome Center is part of the Student Information Center. And up until the pandemic, I worked very short, very seldom at the Student Information Center. But when we came back, the part-timers weren't ready to come back and we needed to have it open. So it fell on the full-timers' shoulders, mainly mine and Loretta's, but Michael also, Michael Saunders. So, Les. Welcome. Thank you. And just so people understand, uh, Nancy is not going to be able to uh, share her video with us because of technical issues. So we're going to be conducted a show with uh, on her end with audio so uh, just just for those who are watching Nance and you, the, we played Rod Stewart uh, at your request uh, any particular reason you wanted to uh, have uh, Rod Stewart as your opening music I, probably, I like him I have seen him in concert a couple of times I just like his songs uh, I don't get to play his DVDs much, so when I can hear it, I like to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all my DVDs are in a, are in a closet. Yes. Uh, he was a big fan. My sister, he, my sister, who uh, is my senior by nine years, she he was a big deal for her yep. in, the, in the 60s growing up. So uh, we've talked a little bit about the format for the exit interview. Why don't we start by talking about you know your background and your life before LaGuardia? Well, I started working here when I was three. So uh, I, don't have much of, <laughs> I don't have much of a, of a background. However, in those short years, um, I was the first, I, I, I was in the first graduating class of LaGuardia. So, and as a lot of our students now, I was the first person in my family to go to college. I'm one of five children, six children, but mostly five. I have a so five children um i lived in the bronx and when i filled out the application i was registered for or admitted to laguardia um to community college number nine laguardia didn't have its name yet so when we came in here in 71 in september of 71 there was um there was an old factory and all the buildings around us, we had the equitable bag building. The uh, dormitory building was the chiclet factory, benzene and chiclet factory. So you always had spearmint and peppermint which was in the air. Um, there was Lenny's Clam Bar across the street at one point. There was a roadway bar. There was EAB banking. Uh, we just had the one building. And then across the street from the main building, it was the Sony building or the satellite building. And we used to pay to park on the top of the, the rooftop over there. And it was, once I started working, it was $65 a quarter to park. And man, we were squawking about that, but we paid it. Uh, <laughs> the street parking was very scarce. Um, so I came to college. I came from the Bronx. A lot of the folks that I graduated high school with we're going to Lehman College, and I knew that if I went where they were going, it would, I probably still wouldn't, have, I'd probably still be in college, because they were just carrying on from their high school, uh, their high school days. So I came here, finished in two years. Uh, we were on the quarter system then, and we had the internships. So it was the first, when the doors opened, there were 525 of us in school. And then by the, you were either on A or B. So if you were on A, you did um, an internship during the third quarter. 
if you were in B, you did an internship in the fourth quarter. And I was in, I think I was in A. We did an internship and you could still take a class. We had, you had to take one class with it. It was a seminar. So you came back to school one night a week and we had discussions about what to expect at work and, you know, what you needed to do and, and that. So, um, what were you majoring in? Liberal arts, because I knew I was going into education. Right. Um, so I worked, I had a seminar, I had an internship at a Head Start in, up in the Bronx, working with three and four year old children. I also did an internship in Puerto Rico. They needed to send some folks over there and I got chosen to go. The family that I lived with while I was there, the, the husband was a professor at one of the schools and the mother was a school teacher. So they were, they were pretty well off. They had a housekeeper. I came home one day from work and my room was beautiful. I mean, it was neat. Meals were cooked. I was like, wow, you know. Um, and then I did an internship here in what was, would be student life. Leo Newbold. I don't know if you remember that name, Hugo. I don't know how. No, that, yeah, that, yeah. that, per, that precedes um, me. So I had, I had great experiences. And from what, from here, I transferred up to Cortland to take, to, and I majored in education to, uh, to be a phys ed teacher. But the year I graduated, the city wasn't offering the test for um, the teachers because of Title IX. So there was a big rigmarole and that. But I did teach for a couple of years. I taught in a, a Greek school, Greek American Institute in the Bronx, and Sacred Heart Private School also up in the Bronx because we lived there at that time. So it was a much easy commute. And yeah. Um, so, so how did you end up back at LaGuardia? Well, because even when I was, after I had graduated, even when I worked here, I did work study. I worked for Fern Kahn and I worked in other offices. And then when I, gra when after graduation, I worked down here for registration during the breaks because they knew me in the registrar's office. And then while I was teaching, I would still work here because working in a Catholic school or a private school, you know, the salaries are pretty low. Um, so I always worked worked in the registrar's office many years. In fact, when Loretta sent, sent out the announcement, I had forgotten about registrar because it was in the mid seventies, late seventies, even the early eighties. So I worked in the registrar's office um and then at one point i just decided that i needed to work full-time um i was offered a full-time position in the registrar's office so i accepted it and um i remember being out at smith haven mall the year before i was hired full-time and judith gazola and i were good friends and we were in the mall and we were looking at these different mannequins and that and sales pitches and i said if we got hired full time that year, we were going to be making ten thousand dollars a year. We were going to be rich. I mean, I'm telling you, we were going to be rich. <laughs> so we didn't get hired that year. We got hired the second year, and uh, well, we weren't rich, but we were working full time. So yeah, I forgot. You know, you mentioned Judith who passed. Yeah, Judith passed. How many years ago? Four. Has it been four yeah. years ago? Which was caught. You know, of course. You know was a, a, caught us all about off guard, yes. it, was, it was very sudden. All right, by the way, it's, uh, we started the show late because we we've been having technical issues and uh, I, I just missed the half hour mark where I would have typically said that you're, you're, you're watching and listening uh, LaGuardia Web Radio, WLGR, and the show is what's going on. It's been so long since we've done it, I had forgotten. <laughs> and my guest today is Nancy Santangelo, who is with the uh, call center and the welcome center here at the uh, uh, Gordie Community College, and, uh, which is a. In, just to be clear, the call center that is part of student affairs, correct? It's a division of student affairs. Yes. Or is it well, well, of it, yeah. it, it split, so we're, we're under. Admi admin as well. No, no, we're under student affairs, but student affairs, we're enrollment management. Enrollment management, with because well, you're talking about because the recent break. Right. Uh, so you're under Gail Beck's chair. Correct. Okay. Well, VC, VP, uh, and, 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 uh, 
in charge of enrollment at the college. Uh, okay, so so where are we? What year? Where? What year are we when you were making ten thousand? What is this? Probably eighty-one, eighty-two. Okay, so what happens next? Well, I stayed in the registrar's office. Um, at one point, they wanted to switch myself and another colleague that worked in a different office, and I moved over to the international student. Well, then it was called the foreign student office. And that woman moved over to the admissions or to the registrar's office. And I stayed there for a couple of years. Um, and then I saw an opening in financial aid. And I thought that would be a better fit for me. So I asked to be transferred. They had a, a space available. Um, I was in financial aid. And then right before the... Um, when, when they were opening C-107, that was supposed to be sort of a one-stop shop. Right. And they moved myself and four other individuals from offices to other offices. They get, asked us to choose where we might like to go. And they said there'd be no guarantee that you'd get to go where you wanted to go. But they were still asking us. So, of course. Um, the Student Information Center was my second choice, but it's worked out very well for me. Um, the other choice is so for testing, recruitment, ed planning, here, and financial aid. So, um, and and one of the things that made this part. So you're 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 in the. Are you a heo here? I'm a heo uh, assistant. Or, I'm a little A on the right side, yeah. Okay, which has made it possible for you to move yes. through all these different offices. Yeah. So, one of the reasons. So you went so when did you move to the, the call center? I've probably is been that, up is here. That, is that that's the choice you that's what you chose, yeah. right, in the end of all the things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've probably been up I think I've been up here about twelve or fifteen years, maybe. I've been yeah. up here a bunch. Actually, you know, you go. I really don't know. It's just, well, and it's yeah. And when you say up here, yes, people don't really realize that you're. I mean, the office is on the ninth floor right. of the C building, yeah. at the very top of the college. Yeah, uh, and it's you know it's been great for me. I work. I mean, I, my supervisor is Loretta Capuano. She's great to work for. Uh, we have a great team. You know, it's gotten smaller. In fact, we all got together yesterday for a little pizza party. To celebrate us, you know, being together, and then you know, me leaving. Um, is it get, when you say it got smaller? Is that is that a result of the pandemic and losing people, or is it just that people have moved the actual people, offices? Pardon me. People have moved on. We had one part timer who who's now working full time in the library. She took the CUNY office assistant test a couple of years ago. Got called. We have another young man who left us in February for the same reason. They have full-time jobs. You know, we try to encourage the young folks and staff to move on. Right. They don't want to stay here forever. Uh, All right. So. Uh, okay. Well, so you've been you've been with the college for 44 years. This is what the part of the of the exit interview I always ask folks uh, what I call the greatest hits. What are some of the things that you've participated in that you feel like the, the most proud of or the, the things that you thought were, were very successful with the college? For me, when I first started working in the registrar's office, to request a transcript or to do the CUNY transfer application, it was all manual. I mean, everything was manual back then. So... I had one of the fastest turnaround times for transcripts. And at that time, I delivered the transfer applications down to UAPC myself and a college assistant. I would drive so that they could get there because they didn't have a pickup the way, you know, it wasn't electronic. And sometimes if the applications needed to get out, they didn't have a mail service that could just take them from here to UAPC. What's UAPC? University Application Processing Center, where the transfer applications are processed. Where and where is that located? West, I don't know. West something. 
It's Vince Watson. It's in, in, had to in, do in Manhattan. Yes, in Manhattan. It's in Manhattan. I was going to say in Manhattan. Yeah. I, I know that uh, Hunter has a building on the west side in the 50s, a, a big warehouse that I don't know what, they, what Kitty has done with. Maybe it was located there at one point. Yeah. So I was proud of that. I've, you know, let's see what else am I, I don't know. Um, well, you, Charles Keyes had asked me to, to, you know, get you to talk about your work in the Senate because you've been a, a long time member of the Senate. And uh, I know he's, we've been talking about interviewing folks who've participated over the years. So if you wanted to talk about some of your Senate activities, you can do that too. Uh, I think participating on different committees, and I, the last couple of years, I've chosen committees that I want to participate in because I don't know. Um, like the food insecurity, food injustice, food insecurity. I think topics like that are, are important and that we need to help each other and help people. Help students. Help students, exactly. Um, but also, I mean, I know, you know, I've, I've assisted Rhonda with the, uh, when she's distributed food, the pop-up food distributions. I right. assisted with that. I think those types of activities are important. You know, people, some people know, I recycle bottles. I collect water bottles, soda cans. I pick them up all over. I have a bag next to me almost all the time. And that, but I also help with the food pantry downstairs and I support Two other food pantries, two different churches. Uh, but I think helping students is is important, and that's I've done that. I have some thank you notes. I was showing Loretta the other day of just things that I've done. Um, just some of my other. You know, at one point I was teaching a business seminar and developing helping students develop their resume. When a student came back. And sort of said thank you or told me they got a job. The interview went well. You know, we'd practice interviews and that. And then you talk to the students and what kind of questions did they ask? Oh, it was the questions you told us about or the questions you would ask. <laughs> so it's helping them see the light. Um, right. I wonder if we're going to re be recycling some of those types of activities now with uh, as, as the college changes its it's focus to, you know, job, get, getting students jobs as they move on out of here. I mean, the transfer is still uh, an issue, but uh, this notion that, that, you know, city needs labor, yeah. needs, needs trained folks, and the CUNY can provide it, which is both our president's, one of his main focuses, as well as the chancellor now is gonna make it his legacy project. It's kind of careers programming. So maybe we'll be, and, it, and it's just funny. I, I think that we've been doing we've been doing this for years here at Laguardia, right? With the, like you talked about co op. Co op. We were founded. We were the, we were the co. Yeah, we were the co op college. Yes. Oh, and and, uh, and that kind of disappeared. I mean, I don't know if you were a part of the Senate in the years when uh, co op met its demise. I was, and I wasn't happy about it then. But I know that, yeah. you know we voted. But, you know. Yeah, well, a different administration. It's, it's just interesting that the previous administration uh, kind of took it apart. And now I'm, I've got a feeling that the president's going to try to put it back together again. That would be good. So. The student, you see some of the young folks that are coming here and, you know, they don't have a clue, you know, they, about work or life and, you know, or a work life anyway. You know, they don't expect. That when they go to work, they should be responsible to have tasks that need to get completed during the day, whatever mm -hmm. they are. So I'm, I'm looking at the stream here. We don't have anybody asking questions, uh, though we do have listeners. We have watchers. So if folks did want to put in a question, but usually in the absence of, of questions, what I like to uh, ask of my guests are, uh, you know, you're moving on and we're staying behind. And uh, so what would you, what kind of advice would you like to give some of the, some of us who are, who are going to continue to do the work here at the college uh, after you're gone? What are some, some wisdom you could share with us from your days, you know, your 44 years? When, 
when I first started, I mean, I started young. So I don't, when I started, I never thought about retiring. That has, you know, I, I've been talking to people in the last couple of months because they say, oh, I wish I was you. I wish I was you. Well, you got to figure out when it's the time, when it's the right time. And I had asked people who had retired, what made them retire or how would I know? And they said, you'll know when you know. And over the last couple of months, I've, you know, I just, I've seen the college go through many changes. Most of them were good. Some of them I don't think were that good. But you just, in my opinion, I just had to keep working. And when I got to be, I really don't want to be there. Then I knew it was time. You know, I have some family things that I need to take care of. So I want to take care of that. Um, I would just say, do your job and do it to the best of your ability, but also find things about your job that you enjoy doing. You know, I was on the center for a couple of years. I enjoyed doing that. Um, I was on the committee that was rewriting some of the governance plan. And I, I did that because I was told that it was going to be a year long process. Well, in that more than a couple of years, my nephew who went to Bahrain, I saw him off and now he's back a year. So it's been <laughs> a little longer process, but I was working with people that I enjoyed working with, you know, along with doing my regular, you know, my normal responsibilities and, and tasks. And I really think that some of the younger people need to realize that if you're if you're in the in the HEO series or Ghetto Food series, whatever series, if you think you're just going to work 35 hours a week and be happy with that, you may have to rethink it. Sometimes you have to give a little. You know, we worked registration sometimes. You know, the first day of classes, you were, we were here 14 hours. I mean, you didn't even think about less than that. And I'm glad I don't have to do it now because there were some days where it was like, wow, this is really, you know, a long day. So I think I would tell people to find other tasks along with their responsibilities that they enjoy and give that some time and effort. So, I think that that's something, you know, I'm always... I'm always interested to see who is adjuncting at the college. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, and, and I don't know about other other areas, but in humanities, for example, we have the you know the speech program uh, affords a lot of folks uh, you know who staff to um, you know teach an extra course as an adjunct. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, in the philosophy, they have the critical thinking course where people have also been afforded the opportunity. To uh, to teach as well, and from all all aspects of the college, and uh, I've always seen that as a strength because you know working with students, yep. staff get to see their needs from a different you know most staff their their interaction with a student is only going to be when a student approaches their office right, right. and goes to their debt. In your case, they call you right, uh, but in the experience in the classroom, uh, now you've got a uh, you know. A full cat, what I want to call it, captive audience. Right. <laughs> but obviously, they have to stick around, and they speak out about that. You know, they're you know, to get give them the opportunity. They're going to tell you talk about their experience, their needs. For example, in the case of the food insecurity, when uh, you know you're talking to students, and you're you know you're upset that they're not buying a textbook or they don't have their supplies, and you know it becomes apparent at some point that they're make they have to make decisions like. Well, I come to school today because do I have enough money to ride the train mm -hmm. or am I going to, you know, am I going to buy the textbook or am I going to have lunch? Right. You know, am I going to eat? And uh, which, you know, once again, it gives you a bit of an insight. And, and as staff, you're in a unique position to uh, either share with them how they can get help or, uh, you know, actually provide for them, you know, in the case of the food insecurity programs. Mm -hmm. You know, the programs that we've got, we've got going on. It's something that I'm, you know, again, I'm picking up as a result of teaching first year seminars. Yes. And uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting. 
about finding out how, how new students take advantage of these all the resources we have or not, and how do we get them to do that? So what else? What other uh, what other tidbits would you of wisdom would you uh, would you want, do you want to impart? Um. I think you have to be true. To, we have to be true to ourselves, you know. And and there's some people who walk around with their chests puffed out like they're they're so high and mighty. And as I tell students in my class when I was teaching, or even wherever I'm contacted outside of this college, you're as important to your family as I am to mine, as the girl next to me is to hers. And sometimes people that are here just don't get that. They think. The world revolves around them, whether they are the student or a faculty or a staff. They're just like, you know, I don't feel that way. And I don't think, and I think we have to encourage students to know that, you know, they're important. Um, you know, they have to show respect, definitely, but that they, they are important and that. And I think, you know, the keynote speaker for opening sessions, you know, about being kind, you know, Right. I, I think some folks around here really need to start showing that a little more often than they do, you know. And and I know, you know, when you're teaching, sometimes it's, you know, you could be kind, even though the student isn't doing well. Maybe, like you said, maybe they have to decide whether they're paying their bill or buying a book or having lunch. So um, what I would tell staff, and students and faculty, you know, be kind um, and do as much as we can because, as they say, we don't know what somebody's struggles are outside of, you know, when they're not here or how they, how they got here this morning or this afternoon. You know, yesterday morning it took me an hour and a half to get here. I got here. I was right. in the mood. I was, so that happened to our uh, our station manager, our station director. Uh, uh, Jamie Riccio is listening in and uh, she said she got a, there were like three accidents she had to uh, deal with on her way in from uh, northwestern New Jersey yeah. so uh, yeah you know I, I get, it was interesting because I, as did you point out in the opening sessions uh, I, you know if I had asked one question I was going to ask the question you know uh, you know, why did we choose that particular topic to open up the sessions with? And I was wondering if it was because, you know, as you were saying, things are tough for our students. Things got tougher in the last two years, yeah. much tougher. Uh, so I, I was trying to figure out the came. But, you know, in the end, I know that uh, my understanding is that Ellen Quish, who was on that committee, mm -hmm. uh, came up with that. So it'd be interesting to find out uh, what her thinking was uh, about making that, choosing that as a particular a topic right. for us to, to focus on and to start the year with but uh yeah and then and you know it's interesting because i mean i don't know how you were when you were running your seminars my bedside manner in my classroom you know vacillates yes sometimes sometimes i'm i'm, I'm dad you know i'm yeah. the and the, the angry dad who came home who comes home and people have been up to mischief and then sometimes you know i can be mama mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to you know, take them uh, to, you know, find out why they're not getting whatever resources they're entitled to. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a good lesson. Um, so we're near the end of the show, the hour, uh, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to thank anybody you'd like to thank at this point. I mean, I know, like you said, you, were, you want Loretta Capuana, your supervisor. Uh, you know, in the Student Information Center, in the call center. I'd like uh, us to thank the rest of the, all the folks that work up here in the Student Information Center, some of, all of our part-timers and the rest of the full-timers. You know, there's five managers up here, and we one of them. And we range in age from, well, probably in their 30s to me. And that I was born 82, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> so uh and the the part-timers have been you know great to work with and for or work with um you know 
I worked in many offices, the financial aid office for the most part, different offices, different folks that have come and gone. And you know what I would tell that some of the new people that start working here, and even some of the people who have been here a while, find someone that you respect, who you can trust, and see if they not not necessarily mentor, but sort of a springboard of somebody that you can get advice from because some of, I, I, you listen to some of these people and they just some of them have expectations that are very high and of what they expect a job to be and what they think they should be able to do so that would be what i would leave with is that they, you should find someone that you can listen to and respect and uh trust them yeah, I will say mentorship program, and uh, that I think it is, it's one of the pieces that I think we need to work on more here at the college, but that, yeah, it certainly is a good piece of advice for anybody coming in. Uh, get, get Find somebody to help you, you know, learn the ropes. Yes. Okay, well, uh, so we're uh, almost out of time, and we're going to give a little time for a little bit of music. Nancy wanted some uh, country music, so we're going to play a little bit of the Carter family. Uh, but I just want to thank uh, our guest today, Nancy Santangelo, uh, with the Welcome Center, the Call Center, but has had, worn many hats here at LaGuardia over the last 44 years, uh, working uh, a great colleague in governance and uh, you know, working with students. I want to thank you for your service, thank you. and thanks for being on the show. And if you're around on Friday, fast by you one eleven. I am. It's interestingly enough, I am going to be around on Friday, uh, and maybe I'll after I, I'm, I'm done with my uh, my students and their uh, e-portfolio hour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, I will pass by. Yeah. And for the rest of you, I want to just thank you for for watching, even though we did have uh, video issues, and but also listening uh, here on uh, the Warrior Radio WLGR. Uh, the show has been what's going on. I'm your host, Hugo Fernandez. How can someone Thanks for watching this later on. How can they listen to it later on? <laughs> we provide a archive. First, it'll be on the Twitch stream for two weeks. Then we have a audio uh, archive, which we call the SoundCloud. Plus, we have our YouTube channel. And interestingly enough, you will end up in the uh, institutional archives that Thomas Cleary manages in the library. So if anybody ever wants to, uh, you know, pull, pull your your exit interview and, and uh, hear your story, I'll be able to get it there. <laughs>